So I had an idea that maybe I could set up a rooftop tent for the taser. And so I had uh, some scrap material that my cousin gave me. It was uh, a spool of fiber for fiber optics. And it has some of these square tubes on it. And so what I'm starting with here, what we're gonna try is see if we can't make this into a platform. I got the dimensions of a tent off of Amazon. And so this is this would be half of the tent. So you kind of can see, I think the idea would be to lift it up just a little bit on, on a platform or raise it off the roll bar two or three inches. And then you can kind of see how it looks from the side. But basically what would happen is you, I'm, I'm gonna build a second one just like this one. This one's like, you know, four foot by six foot approximately. Uh, so I'll build a second one and then this will actually, the second one will set on top of it here and then it will hinge out. So it'll form a platform that is six foot wide this way and then I think it ends up being like 84 or 88 inches uh, coming out this way with a ladder on the end which supports the other side so basically what what I decided to do or what I've done on that piece so far trim the edges off of these you can see where these hooked onto the spool previously cut the edges off so they're just a piece of square tubing and then I make the one uh, cut off a, a section and add to make that six foot long and then the other ones I just trim down just about an inch uh, and that gives me like 42 inches somewhere around there um, and that gets me what I need to make my rectangle uh, still not sure exactly what I'll do for the deck I don't really want to do plywood because you know the car sits outside a lot and if you're going camping and, and things get wet I just don't know it doesn't seem like it would be something that would last very well but a lot of the guys on YouTube that I saw uh, that's kind of what they're using they're just using a couple sheets of plywood so I guess that would be an option but with the cost of lumber being so expensive um, you know it used to be the cheap option but now I don't know if that's the case so I'm thinking it thinking through some of the ideas expanded metal um, maybe some like aluminum diamond plate I could check the costs on those and then come back put in some type support bracing in the middle so that whatever I use doesn't have to body weight um, it just has to span you know the one foot by two foot section for each one so uh, I'm gonna give that a shot and just see how it comes out I got got a good uh, start from a YouTube video that I watched they showed the hinge style that you can use that lets you keep the the padding and the tent on the inside when you fold it up and then the idea is it would be like a jumping jack trailer where when it's all folded up I would actually still have a platform on the top where I could load my gear so when I'm driving out to camp I could load the stuff on the very top when you get to camp you unload the top rack and then it unfolds to a tent so I'd like to try to do it um, on the cheap. So if I can use the scrap metal to make the majority of the frame, uh, all I would need is you know, whatever I want to use for the decking. The tent I found, I think it's less than $40 on Amazon and I can throw together some foam. So we'll give that a shot and I'll see if I can't uh, make myself a rooftop tent. I've always wanted to try it and you know, the whole point of the taser is I've always wanted to try it so I'm just going to do it. And so that's kind of the theme and that's the reason why I even started working on it was I always wanted to try to weld. I always wanted to try to bend tubing and build a roll cage. And this was just a cheap way to get started on it was, you know, a thousand dollar car. It's rear wheel drive. It's V8. It's a lot of fun. And you don't have to be afraid, you know, because I don't have any experience. I don't have to be afraid of messing it up because it's just a cheap car that's there for learning and fun. So we'll get started on the roof rack and see if we can't make something that's at least workable.
my apologies to all those people who actually know how to weld because that was probably very painful to watch. But we got all the pieces cut and we have two almost the same rectangles here. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's, it's gambler spec. It's close enough. Um, so now the next thing I got to figure out, you can see this will unfold. So each person would kind of be in this slot times two. Um, so I'm thinking I'll put another brace across the middle of each of those for support. And then I've got some lighter weight pieces I cut off that spool as well. And uh, I'm thinking I might just kind of go and make a few supports that way. I'm torn between making it strong and making it too heavy. And I'm still not sure what I'm gonna use material on it. So I think we'll start with those middle pieces because I don't think you can really go wrong with just a couple of middle supports and then just see what material we could find to use as a decking. Working on the hinges and we got kind of a template basically just take this piece of uh, 3 16 sheet metal and my plan is to take kind of this shark fin shape and make four hinges out of it uh, and then each one once I cut them all out I don't really have the right tool but I'm just going to use a a death wheel angle grinder and just cut these out and then put them together and grind them to try to make them the same shape and then we'll throw a whole Actually, probably a couple holes. One for the pivot that will connect the two hinges. And then another one that will connect to the bar that will go inside the tent and actually inside. So we'll cut that out and then grind it. And then we'll weld it onto the framework that I've got here. I just got the ladder. Let's see. I haven't opened it yet. But uh, just a cheap six and a half foot ladder off of Amazon. So we'll open that a little bit later. We don't have a ton of time but just trying to make a little bit of progress on the, on working on the rooftop tent. Okay, we got all four cut out. We got them all ground down, smoothed off. Check out the results. Definitely not perfect, but easily gambler spec. Not bad. Next thing we'll do is get those holes punched in there, and then uh, we'll be ready to smooth off this framework, and then the hinges will sit on either side of that where it hinges to open up the tent. So we got the bottom piece of the rooftop tent where it mounts onto the roll bar. I just tacked in place these little clamshell roll bar uh, mounts that I made. So basically just took a, a piece of uh, scrap metal and then held everything up in place, got it centered the way I liked it and then just kind of tacked everything in place so you can see how once that's all final welded uh, you'll be able to just set this up slide it up into place with the front of the roll bar and then bolt it down in the front and in the back and of course that's the underside and you can see the hinges on this side are all final welded now so the next thing i've got to do is fire up the welder and just finish weld all these and then at that point, I think we're pretty much ready to put it up on the car. We'll just need to maybe uh, clean it up and slap some paint on it. But so far, seems like it's gonna work. We got 
got the welding complete here on the rack. Let me show you kind of. So you can see how these uh, clamps, these clamshells hook onto the roll cage. So I got those welded onto the steel plates. You can see just a few spots where I was able to hit them. I'm kind of thinking I may run like a, like a triangular piece on each of these to just give them just a little bit more strength, uh, but pretty strong from what I can tell. All these mounts are just kind of snugged up, just finger tight for now, but already, I mean, there's, there's a lot of support and a lot of strength. So I feel like it came out pretty good. Well, I think what we'll try to do is build those triangles and just add just that little bit of strength, then come back down, clean up all the rust. And uh, once we've got that all cleaned up, we'll get ready to paint. So the next thing we're looking at is the decking material. A uh, few of the DIYs that I saw showed using plywood as kind of the deck material, which seemed fine. Uh, plywood used to be kind of the cheap option, um, but it's with lumber prices, not really that anymore. So that kind of put a little bit of a, a downturn on it for me, plus the fact that over time it's gonna rot and deteriorate and warp. There were just a lot of downsides to using plywood. So I was trying to find an alternative. Um, steel is too heavy. Aluminum is too expensive. I really wanted to find something that I could like repurpose um, and do inexpensive, um, but also make use of something that, you know, other people aren't using. So went to the junkyard yesterday, went through looking around just to see what kind of ideas I could come up with. And I think we'll be able to use the roof out of an old Econoline van. It was about 10 feet long and four feet wide. And it had kind of the corrugations or whatever you'd call them where the, the metal was strengthened to kind of keep it from flexing, but it's a very thin metal. So I'm hoping uh, we're going to cut that up and haul it out, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to put it across and worst case scenario, um, maybe put one more brace down the center to make this each section into like four squares instead of the two, two rectangles. And I'm hoping that by doing that, um, I won't have to do any more bracing because right now it's already getting heavy. And so as I add more and more bracing to support the lightweight deck, then I'm actually going against the whole purpose of making it a little lighter by using the thinner stuff. So I want to use something that's strong but light, also inexpensive, and really there, there just isn't much in that category. So I'm hoping that when we go today, we can get this roof cut off of the van, um, get it home without injuring ourselves or... Um, denting it up or bending it up too bad. Um, but uh, for $30, which is what they, they told me it would cost, I feel like there wasn't many other alternatives. So we'll, we'll go this afternoon. Um, after I get off work, we'll go out and cut the roof off of that van. And then we'll get, get it back here, cut it into two pieces. And then I'm trying to decide if I want to weld or if I want to like self-tapper the sheets on uh welding would be stronger but if i ever needed to get that off because it was you know a completely terrible idea that would be really difficult if i weld the whole thing so that's the next plan junkyard this afternoon and then we'll get that deck put on as soon as we get the two sheets
So we got back from the junkyard. We got our piece of roof, uh, just over 10 feet long and just over four feet wide. So my cousin Anthony's working with me today. He helped me get this home. So what we're gonna do next, all these braces have got some kind of a foam adhesive, it looks like underneath them. So we're gonna try the heat gun and see if we can't get these off. And that should take the arch out of the, uh, or the curve out of the roof so we can go ahead and cut it. Quick roof tent update. So we've got both sides now cut to fit onto the framework. Uh, I think we, after we tried welding on this one in a couple spots, I mean clearly this sheet metal is very thin and it's going to burn through really easily. And I'm still not 100% sure this is going to work all that well. So do is just put in some self-tapping screws and uh, see if we can't support it with maybe one more. I've got some more pieces of square tubing that are like a thinner or a, a smaller diameter square tubing. I think what we'll do is come back and put in just one more brace coming across to make that into more of a, like an X. So there'll be one more coming across so we have X of support. I think that's as good as it's going to get. Um, there's going to, it's going to take some dings and some dents because it is sheet metal, but it does seem strong enough that it's not going to rip through or anything like that. So I think worst case scenario, you end up with some dings and dents, which it's not a, a huge deal. Um, you know, in hindsight, it was a lot of work to get it this far. Um, it was 30 bucks, which is a pretty good savings over a lot of the other stuff, but really labor intensive. The amount of work it's taken to get it to this point, cutting it off, hauling it home, um, taking off all the support panels, that was pretty time intensive. Um, and then cutting it to fit here, fastening it down, extra support. There's a good amount of labor that's going into saving that money. I guess if you were mostly worried with reusing uh, other materials or reusing some type of scrap, could be a good option, but if you're just looking for something, a quick, easy, uh, do-it-yourself rooftop tent, maybe this isn't the way, but time will tell. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull both of these off. They're only held in by uh, four or five screws right now. So I'm gonna pull both these off, and then I'm gonna prep the frames for paint and add those extra braces and go ahead and get the, the framework painted. Then I'll have to come back and spend more time getting the rest of this rubber adhesive stuff off and finish the top and then spray those and then put them back together with sheet metal screws. Okay, so moving on to the next step here. I'll show you where I'm at. So I got the both frames taken off. I took all the rust off, knocked it all down and then threw a coat of paint on it. We got the bottom uh, deck mounted now to the roll bar using our roll bar uh, clamps that I bought. So that worked out pretty well. And then you can see how I added that uh, brace across it now. I cut some pieces of this rubber underlayment. Um, I kind of thinking that we're gonna get some vibration and possible noise from this corrugated sheet metal. So um, cut a few more pieces. They're just hanging from the basketball hoop drying off. But I think I'll just leave that here as just kind of a gasket material to take out some of the vibration and some of the sound. Um, just a really thin, skinny layer all the way around. And then you can see the 
piece of sheet metal that's going to go on there. It's, as soon as my uh, rubber strips dry off here in about five minutes, I'll run out, grab those, cut the last two pieces of the gasket, and then by that time, I think this decking material will be finished. And then what we decided to go with on this is some uh, like really short <clears throat> sheet metal screws. And I think that will hold it down, make it easy to take off in case it was a, a complete fail of an idea to use the van roof. Um, and also they're pretty low profile. I mean, they don't stick up a whole lot and I think they'll look nice and look finished. So about five minutes, we'll get this gasket on and then get the deck on. And then I'll show you kind of what it looks like from there. Okay, well, that's done. I didn't really know how close to put these screws, so I started, this is close to seven inches, and then down the center is around six, and then um, going this way, I just kind of tried to put one on each bump up on either side of it. I'm not sure if that's gonna be enough. It didn't seem like too much, especially here, this is a pretty big, gap um, so I'll just have to see one thing that I did do which I'm not sure if it was a mistake yet or not um, each of these was sticking up so I came back with a hammer before I painted and just kind of knocked them down uh, and what I noticed that it did is it you know stretched out the metal and so it caused this nice flat surface to get a little bit of a warp to it which now I've got a couple spots I noticed where before I didn't have any noise and now I've got some flex where there's the metal has uh, expanded or shrunk or I don't know what the what the exact reason is but because I I stretched it out here by pushing these down that's kind of spread into the metal so I did notice that but it does feel pretty strong I got up here and I feel like once you put a pad on it um, you're really I don't think you can really hurt it, at least by sleeping on it. Um, I do think it will dent um, if you were to put something, you know, if you were to hit it with a hammer, I'm sure that the sheet metal would get um, dings and dents in it, but you know, so would plywood, I guess, to that point. But I feel like it was lighter than plywood and definitely cheaper. Definitely a lot more labor intensive, um, but we'll just have to see with time how it works out and how I like it. So. Now we've got that done. The, the deck or the one that's mounted to the roll cage is all finished. So next thing to do is prep the other half sheet metal. I've got to go back, strip off all of that uh, adhesive that was holding the braces, and then um, prep the paint a little bit, spray them down with some spray paint, and then we could do the same thing to the other half. It's been a long day, but we got some stuff done. Let's show you what we got here. I was able to get the both pieces put together. We got the panel put on each side, all painted up, screwed down. It is not light. I don't know how it compares to uh, normal rooftop tents, but I mean, I guess this is the majority of the structure. The tent itself, I mean, probably only weighs two pounds, and the mattress pad is another five, so we don't have a ton more weight to add, but to kind of give you the walk around. Just got one bolt here uh, with a lock nut, and then these two holes will be for the tent poles when I get to that point. The camp out is tomorrow, so the plan is tomorrow during the day, We'll get this back uh, opened up and make sure everything looks good. Um, stand on it, just make sure the platform is good. And as long as that part is good, then we got to go about 
a way to get this aluminum ladder connected on there. Uh, the idea is the ladder connects there on the driver's side and then you unfold the ladder this way, use it as a lever to pull the platform over and then the ladder itself is used as a support brace for this side and then you use the ladder obviously to get up and get into the tent. So we'll see if we can figure out the hinge on that. Uh, I got a couple options that I found at the steel store. Thought this was pretty cool, just kind of a weldable hinge. Same thing, different concept. I don't really know what's gonna work. I haven't really looked at any instructional videos online for how the ladder attaches, so I was just gonna kind of see if I could figure it out, and then worst case, I may go to the YouTube to see if I can find anything else. But that's the plan for tomorrow. Work on the ladder, and then once we get the ladder part figured out, set the tent up and make sure the pad fits. I'm not going to go through the whole process of making it automated so that it all pops up at once right now because we've got to leave tomorrow around four in the afternoon. So if we can just get the tent up there and then have some way to tie it down in case it gets windy, get the mattress pad inside, we'll call that good enough for this weekend and then we'll work on from there. So we'll get this, I'm wrapping up tonight and then we'll start recording again tomorrow when we make a little bit more progress. Okay, we are making some serious progress now. Everything laid out, got the platform stretched out, and then took my tent. It was the first time I've tried it on and it seemed to fit pretty well. For right now, this is kind of how we're doing it. Since we got a camp tonight, I've just got a single self-tapping screw to hold in the strap to hold it down. And then you can see the tent pole still goes into the old mount. The width on it is about perfect length on it about perfect as well um, same thing in the front for the ladder uh, just use some for right now some more self tapping screws with a little hinge that I bought from the steel supply place um, that works pretty well and then as you can see ladder it will extend one more step but right there is holding it close to level I guess you're supposed to put you know, some of the weight on that on that ladder, that's supposed to, to bear the brunt of the weight that you put on this extended piece. So it's just slightly inclined so that when you get in, it kind of can take that weight. And then on the inside, I rolled out my three inch uh, mattress topper that I bought from Walmart. It was like $98 uh, queen size, and you can see size wise i mean it is almost exactly i thought i thought i might have to do some trimming um it's still relaxing in the in the heat from being in the bag at the store but it's exactly wall to wall it's going to work out perfectly without any cutting so that's nice so the tent at this point i didn't cut anything i just left these mounts on since we have to camp tonight and uh, what we'll do is just, I'm gonna load up the bedding next. And then once we've got the bedding all loaded up, then I'll take the poles out and then fold up the bedding and the mattress pad with the tent and then keep the poles separately. And then when we get out to the campsite, we'll fold out the tent, put the poles back in, and then we should be up and running. So I think that's a pretty successful uh, rooftop tent build. Everything really turned out pretty well. Um, really happy with the way Everything looks, it looks pretty professional. So far, I I think that was a pretty good choice with the uh, van roof for sheet metal. It was so inexpensive. There was a lot of labor there, but really it feels strong and about as light as you can get for sheet metal. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. I think we'll, that'll work for right now. We'll use it tonight. And then starting next week, we'll see about making the whole tent automated so that when you open open that hinge, the whole tent will set itself up. Um, I just don't know. We'll have to do something because obviously these poles go crisscross and they'll need to just go in parallel to hoops. Um, and then do I want to cut a hole in it uh, and put the poles on the inside? If I did that, I have to cut the bottom out of the tent. And then these holes here are to attach onto the two tent poles. So I either cut the bottom out of the tent and make a hoop that goes on the inside 
or I make a hoop for the outside and then figure out how to attach it. So that'll have to be for later. For right now, thanks for watching.